There's, there's actually two things that can go on. You, when you can have high arch or flat feet, and then you can have pronation or supinate. So you can still have flat feet and not be pronated, or you can have a high arch and you can still be pronated. Um, there's a, let's see. This is what pronation and supination is in the foot. Let me just make sure I don't miss any of this stuff. Yeah, so that's pretty much the arch is what she had covered there. Okay. And then this is what pronation is. It's a combination of movements, which is Pronation is going to be dorsiflexion, uh, inversion, eversion, and abduction. So it's like this. If you think of the navicular, what you're doing is you're driving the navicular down into the foot. So it's pronation is like this. So where it's turning in this way. Okay, so the it's eversion, so the foot's turning out like that. I'll do it like this way. So it's eversion like that, dorsiflexion, and abduction. So basically, like I said, this part of the navicular is dropping down in like this. Whereas supination is inversion, plantar flexion, and adduction. So your foot is going to be more rigid when it's in supination like that. It's like when, when people do karate kick, right? They, they put their foot out like that. And then pronation is going to be like this. And then there's things you can do to, to examine people that if you look at the calcaneus, if they're pronated, the calcaneus would be tipped like that. And there'll be a, you can draw a line between the, the long axis of down the back of the calf, and then you look at that compared to the calcaneus, and it'll be angled like that, there's pronation. So basically like this right here. So this is the big toe side, this is the little toe side. So you have this line coming down the calf, and then you'll see this right here. And what that's called is calcaneal valgus. Okay? And I might have mentioned in this class, but if I didn't, anyway, when you talk about valgus and varus, it's valgus is when the distal part of the extremity moves away from the midline. So in this case here, this is the distal part of the lower leg that moves away from the midline, that's valgus, which is pronation. And then if it moves towards the midline, that's varus, which is supination. Yeah. Alright, so then when we talked about all these muscles in the lower leg, most of them pretty much they all crossed the ankle. Okay? And they went, some of those went into the to little to the toes and the big toe. Okay? When those muscles, just like when we talked about it in the hand, when we talked about it in the forearm, there you had muscles where the muscle belly was in here and then the tendons went across and went to the fingers. And then when, when those muscles were in the hand, and it was just tendons, and what do we call those? It came from the outside, so they're extrinsic. And then muscles that had their whole muscle that was in the actual hand itself were intrinsic muscles. So if the origin and insertion were all within the hand, they were intrinsic muscles. If the origin started the forearm and went into the hand as a tendon, those were extrinsic muscles. So it's the same thing in the lower extremity. You have Muscles that have their muscle belly up here, and they cross the ankle and either go to the tarsal bones or to the metatarsals and phalanges, those are going to be extrinsic muscles of the foot. And those are going to be, I'm not really showing them there. Okay. So these are all intrinsic muscles of the foot. Okay? And then in this case, it's going to be just like it was in the upper extremity. You don't need to know all the names and origin insertions of all these intrinsic muscles. Uh, although I mean, it, it may come up, but there's just basic concepts. It's the same kind of thing like in the hand. You had the thenar pad and then the hypothenar. So, so muscles that were on this side were going to do things to the thumb. And then, so it's a similar kind of thing in the foot. So we'll go over some of these, but again, you don't have to get to the point where you know all the individual details of this origin insertion. We're not going to get into that. The only things that you need to know as far as origin insertion in the foot is ones that we've already covered. Like the intrinsic, extrinsic muscles of the foot, tend the muscle bellies that were up here that came across the foot, the ones that we already covered. 
I like the bounce the anterior, the bounce posterior, all those types of things. But you know, you're going to have muscles along the outside edge here are going to AB duct the little toe. Right? So it's going to pull something out here. So the muscles over here are going to pull the big toe out like that. But the, dif the big difference between the hand and the foot is you have, remember we talked about opposition. Right? Can anybody do opposition with their big toe? Right? I think the, the, those like chimpanzees or monkeys or apes or something, they can do that with their feet. They can grab onto stuff. We can't do that. So it's one thing you can grab things with your toes if you do this. You can't go like that. Your big toe doesn't come around and go underneath the other toes. Not unless you're in a reading with monk apes or something. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that. So here's some of the deeper layers. Okay, so these would be extrinsic muscles of the foot. Because right? here's this flexor digitorum longus. That's the muscle that came up from, from here in the deep compartment of the, of the calf. So that would be an extrinsic muscle, and then these are going to be intrinsic. So the intrinsic muscles of the foot, they're divided into a superficial layer, and then the second layer, and then it goes even, even deeper into the third layer. So there's muscles that are going to bring this toe over that way. So you have inner osseous, same kind of things in the hand. But again, you don't need to know all the details of these. Just understand that there's intrinsic muscles in the foot and extrinsic. Extrinsic means what? Outside. Yeah, the belly of the muscle is up here, and then it's only tendon as it goes down into there. And then intrinsic, the origin and insertion of the whole part of the muscle is going to be within the foot itself. And then there's four different layers of the intrinsic muscles of the foot. Most of them are pretty much on the bottom of the foot, right? Because you feel at the bottom of your foot, you feel a lot more muscle mass than you can on the top of the foot. Okay, so now we'll talk about ankle ligaments. So what do you call it when you tear a ligament? Sprain. Sprain. You tear a muscle? Strain. Strain. Okay. So we're going to talk about muscles on the lateral part of the ankle and the medial part of the ankle. And then ligaments are always named by the two bones that they attach. Okay. So what do you think the ligaments on the lateral side of the foot, most of them are all going to have what in their name? Fibula. Okay. And then right below the fibula, what are the bones that are, what are the bones of the rear foot? Calcaneus and what? Talus. Okay. So those ligaments are pretty much going to either attach to the calcaneus or the talus. Okay? And basically you have three different ones going down like that. Okay? So the middle one goes to the calcaneus, so then what would you call what do you call this one that goes straight up and down here? They use calcaneal, let's see. Yeah, calcaneal fibula. Okay? So for some reason they named this one from calcaneus to fibula. And then these other ones are talofibular, and you have one in the front, so what would you call that one? Anterior, Anterior and then posterior talofibular. Right. So anterior talofibular is going to be this one right here, and then you have posterior talofibular on the back side here, and calcaneal fibular right there. And the typically, and you can see which one of these bones goes farther down, the fibula or the talus? I mean, of the tibia. The fibula goes farther down, right? If you feel on your own foot, right? You can see your lateral malleolus goes farther down. So which movement are you going to have more on the foot? Inversion or eversion? Inversion. If you go eversion, the fibula is right there blocking it. If you go inversion, you got more movement. You can turn the foot in more than you can out. So which way do you think the ankles get sprained more? Inversion. 